Flag is up. 16 laps of the track. Very much a team event, the team pursuit. You've got to knit together very, very quickly. They've rehearsed the start probably hundreds of times under Charlie Walsh. They let the leaders slot in. They all fall in a line. They get the rhythm now as they're led out by Brett Aitken here. And then they settle in quickly. They'll do either full laps or half laps. It depends how they sense the strength of the team. They'll also be receiving signals from the track side as to what to do. The team doesn't ride alone. Stuart O'Grady has the front line now. We're looking for a time at through the opening kilometre. If they're going to be on one of these record rides or really even qualifying, they must be through in one minute seven seconds to be in with a chance of qualifying. One minute eight will be very, very dicey indeed because New Zealand are hovering near the end of the qualifiers and they've returned 4 minutes 21.145. When we see the kilometre check, which will be the next time through, we want to see exactly whether we can beat a one. Here it comes. Oh, well, can we beat it? 16.49. We're on a world record here. 16.49 for the Aussies. They are fractions of a second outside of the Italian world record done earlier. This young Australian team are on a cracker now. What a team this is. They are riding, cruising to a world record here. The Italians have the time of 4.15.103. They're losing one man now, but this is the time to lose your man. When you're riding to a world record scheduled, you can lose a man. As coming round in the lead here is Stuart O'Grady. This is a superb team. They're bringing them round now to what is certainly going to be a new world record on the board here. This Australian team is absolutely phenomenal as they come round towards the bell this time and Charlie Watts just walks along the base there where he stands on the track tells them where they stand on the schedule. He has given his fist in the sky saying, you're going to a world record, you are going to a world record. As they come round, the world record today is 4.15.103. Look at this one, 4.11.245. That is a world record and an Olympic record, which was faster than the world record. The Olympic record was 4 minutes 13.3. The world record was 4.16.1. I'll explain that anomaly to you later. And away this time, the Germans are now on the second star for this team, led out by Michael Glockner, Jens Lehmann, Stefan Steinbeck and Andreas Walzer. The only team left now who can spoil a perfect debut tonight for the Australians. They've set a world record time. The question now as to whether the Germans, the world champions, all four of them taking the title last year, it's exactly the same team in Stuttgart, whether they can now take on this tremendous Australian team and take the world record away for them. Or even if they do that, of course, they will qualify fastest. And I wonder when it was the last time the last team to start had to set a world record to qualify fastest for the quarterfinals, which will also take place today. Ground. I think it's to the bell this time. It will be to the bell this time. One yeah, lap to go. Well, one thing's for certain now. The Australians have started off and they couldn't have hoped for a better start. They have set a world record and will qualify with the best time of the evening. They now go into the quarterfinals. But there's equally so 4.14.9 before tremendous last kilometre by the Germans. Absolutely stunning last kilometre. They would have set a world record, but the Australians beat them to it. They are quicker than the Italians, but it won't be called a world record because Australia set the mark earlier tonight with a 4.11.245, but they've qualified second to best in this competition. And now the Australians can expect to face Czechoslovakia in the quarterfinals later tonight. The match now for a place in the semis. And what has happened is that the Australian team of Brett Aiken, Stuart McGreed, Stephen McGreed and Brett Aiken, Stuart O'Grady and Sean O'Brien, they have come through with the best time in the, in the openers and they're now up against Czechoslovakia here in the first round proper. It's sudden death as a knockout. We have just seen the German team catch the New Zealand team and put them out of the competition. But now we expect something far, far better from the Australian team and they are up by almost three quarters of a second as we head out towards the first kilometre. Well, they altered the start very slightly. They had Brett Aitken lead them out. And as far as I know, they reversed the decision to start with Brett after that world record time. They moved him up to number two. But it really, look at this, 1.6.203. We are on the world record schedule again. But before we get too excited, 
you can't set a world record when you have another team on the track they could certainly set an olympic record which stands at the same time now four minutes 11.245 and this australian foursome is absolutely electric they couldn't ride closer together the wheels are almost hugging each other and they're already in almost the same straight as the czechoslovakian team they are almost on the back of the Czechoslovakian riders. This has been an unbelievable night for Australian cycling. A world record that set the ball rolling with this very team. Then Cathy Watts, who was given the Olympic record when she qualified fastest in the women's 3,000 metres. Then Gary Dewand winning in two straight rides against Curtis Harness. He's in the semi He's in the finals tomorrow. And now we are watching this foursome uh, go through here. They're about to go over the top of the Czechoslovaks and that will put them in the semi-finals tomorrow there's no holding these to these riders tonight they can't put a, a wheel in the wrong place on this velodrome there they go as smooth as you like whoop watch where you turn when the team comes over the czechs have been swamped in just three minutes of riding here and the aussies continue smoothly and the czechs don't seem to realize what is going on this is quite dangerous at the moment they're really the Australians were lucky to come away unscathed from that. Uh, they surely, the Czechs must have heard those wheels of the Australians coming through. They are riding on for a time, which will give them their placing in the semi-finals tomorrow. But the way they're riding tonight, they will stay away from the Germans and they will take either Italy or Denmark in the semi-finals. And that is what they will want, save the best to the last. And then they should get their teeth into Germany. So they continue on the track now as they come to the bell this time. We're looking out for a good time as well at this stage. Three, uh, eight, they've gone through and the Germans and the Australians have gone through quicker than that in three, seven. They really seem to be the best team in this uh, pursuit. There's no question about that. We're going to see another great time. It's going to be an Olympic record this time. They've gone inside the world record, which is for 11.24. It cannot be a world record, but it will be an Olympic record. And I can't remember when an Olympic record was better than a world record. But that's what they've done now. The same world record on the screen, but they do get confused here at the stadium. It is only an Olympic record, and I say only. Lead Sean O'Brien and Stuart O'Grady are facing Michael Glockner, Jens Lehmann, Stefan Steinbeck, and Guido Fulst of Germany, the defending world champions aiming for an Olympic gold. The one team that stands in their way and they've beaten them at every post so far is this young Australian team who will leave the Barcelona Velodrome with the world record, the fastest team ever on the track outdoors. They have now 16 laps of the stadium and it's match racing time no longer important. You've just got to beat the team on the opposing track. The Australian starting in the back straight, both on the start of orders and the uh, Germans in the home straight. Both these teams have produced world-class performances. The Australians have been marginally better, but now it is one-on-one -on -one or four-on-four. -four. The silver medal is safe. We won a gold one now. We've had a silver from Gary Niewon. And they are fractionally up at the start. Well, the crowd have equal audience tonight, the Germans and the Australians. I think they've come from just about everywhere except from the swimming pool arena tonight to watch the cycling. And this is going to be a very, very close pursuit indeed. 0.158 is the advantage of Australia. The naked eye can't spit them at all out there on the track. They are running almost in parallel. It was the battle we expected and now it's gone slightly to Germany. Germany now nosing ahead by quite a bike length, I would think. So they're going to have to lift the Australians to bring them back into this now. There's been a very fast thousand metres, 1-6-0-0-3. That is the time to the Germans. And the Australians going through in 1-6.4. So the, and the, in fact now the Germans have put the Australian youngsters here under extreme pressure. The world champions are far more experienced. They're older and they're more solid perhaps. Their changing is very, very fluid here. But the Australians are coming back. 0.3 of a second now. Charlie Walsh down on the track side there, looking at his team as they come through. We'll catch a glimpse of him shortly, I think, as they go along the back straight. 
We'll see Charlie Walsh there, waving on his team now, indicating slightly thumbs down, just on half a second. And still, the four Australians have not panicked and lost the rhythm here. It is nothing at this stage, 2,000 metres. Australia have put Germany down. I, or am I reading it incorrectly? Because 0.8 of a second, no, it is still the Germans up. 0.8 of a second towards the Germans. The Germans very, very smooth here. As Brockner comes in and tucks behind. And it is now nosing out towards a full second here. Charlie Walsh is showing no emotion, but he's stepping slightly further along the boards, which means he is indicating to his team they are dropping slightly down as he walks towards them. And he's saying, there he is, you must now pick it up. The Germans are well into the rhythm here, but the new world record holders from Australia have shown that they have tremendous depth in talent here. Now, can they come back? 1.17 seconds, they're losing it a little bit now. As they head off towards their third kilometre, coming down to an end, this time, three kilometres completed. Germans are holding a lead of 1.6 seconds. This is going to have to be a fabulous final kilometre from Australia if they're going to pull this gold out of the bag now. They threatened to do it all along. We were worried about the Germans. They proved to be very, very solid. They've got the experience. They are the defending world champions. And remember that this young Australian team were forced into the bronze medal position a year ago. And now they've lost a rider as well, which is not good at this stage of the race. The rider, in fact, who has dropped off the back is Sean O'Brien, who has found the pace a little bit too quick. And I think that will now give it to Germany. But there's no disgrace in that because this team has set these boards alight from the moment they qualified in at a world record time. They are the fastest team outdoors, that is for sure. But they won't be taking home the gold medal because the Germans, who have come against the Australians before in the sprint and triumph, now do it in the 4,000 meters pursuit in 48.791. That is a new Olympic record as well, 48.791. And they beat the Australians, and they beat them well, so there can be no complaints from the Australians, but a silver medal, our second of the evening here. So, a tremendous finish for Germany. They led virtually all of the way, and the Australians still recording a superb time of 4.10.218, with the flags fly for Australia in this velodrome tonight. And what a superb round, Jens Lehmann, who robbed of his goal by Chris Borman in the individual pursuit, has now got it and repeated his gold medal of world champion one year ago. He now converts that with his team to Olympic champion. The Australians have a second silver medal and there will be more to come tonight for sure. The Germans at one stage of this competition must have worried about the young Australians and they came out and qualified in a world record time. The Olympic champion jersey for the four Germans, Jens Lehmann. Gets a gold medal to match his world championship medal of a year ago. Second and silver medalist. Segundo y medalla de plata del equipo de Australia. And there they are, Brett Aitken, Stephen McLee, the Sean O'Brien, Stuart O'Grady, and it's not all over for Stephen McLee tonight. He has to come out in the 50 kilometres point final shortly, and everybody has put pressure on him to win gold there. He's a former world champion at that type of race. But right now, he can savour the enjoyment of the enjoyment they've given us over these last two days of pursuiting. They have been a marvellous, marvellous team. He started the qualifying with a 4 minutes 11.245 seconds world record time and one or two of you have contacted us and said is it really a world record because the rules are changing and it is confirmed, I've spoken with the world body here, it is a world record and will go in the books at 4 minutes 11.245 seconds. The Germans did a faster time in the final, 4 minutes 8.791. But that will not be a world record because at the moment it was in competition against another team, although the rules are in the process of being changed for the future. Ray Godkin, the president of the Australian Cycling Federation,
presenting the flowers. And what a happy man he is this week in the stadium as he's seen these riders ride so well in every event. The young faces of a very young team. They'll be back. And this was a great ride too by Denmark. Ken Frost, his brother Dan is up in a minute and he will hope to take gold in the 50 kilometers points. He's a past Olympic champion, defends his title in that event. But right now they're taking the bronze medal here as the best losers. The fastest team in the ride-off in that semi-final. There's no ride anymore for bronze medal. The fastest losing time gets bronze. will be remembered just as the individual pursuit was as the fastest series ever seen in the world of outdoor pursuiting and the Australians have been right in the thick of both. <laughs> 